May this message lead you to a deep reflection on the processes and tools of self-transformation provided by the renowned Yogi Sadhguru. If you want to start your yoga journey with Sadhguru, click on the link in the description of this video and learn more. Do you think, though, that technology is a good thing or a bad thing? Technology is neither. The beautiful thing about technology is if you learn to use it, it works for you. But who you are will decide how you use it, isn't it? But how do you So deal what, what we need to fix right now in the world is, who are we? This is what we need to fix. We've all become many things which we are not. Essentially, we are born as life on this planet. Rest of the things are taught to us, isn't it? Stop teaching all this stuff which makes us something other than human beings. I mean, you can say this as Sadhguru, but how do you deal with a fifteen-year-old who spends six, seven hours of their day on a phone, which then impacts their mental health, their state of mind? See, uh, <coughs> being on the phone need not necessarily impact the mental health. But what is on the phone? That's a question, isn't it? Right now, at least in India, whatever they may be looking for pornography, but Sadhguru pops up. <laughs> I'm saying this with a certain glee <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just walking in Bangalore city. Uh, some uh, twelve, thirteen-year-old boys, they… from… a bunch of them, they say, Hey, Sadhguru, Sadhguru, and they come running. I said, Hey, you idiots, how do you know who I am? I said, <laughs> I said no, we watch your videos, Sadhguru. I said, what? Your mother must be forcing you to watch my videos. They said, no, in our class, all of us are watching your videos. I really inquired and I find <coughs> in every school that I go to, at least twenty to thirty percent of the children are watching our videos. I'm telling you, when I was fifteen, nobody could ever get me to watch a goddamn spiritual video <laughs> all right? No way <laughs> But today, children are watching. So, this is a new and a fantastic development. So, phone is not the problem, what is the content you're putting on it and who is putting on it? Children are putting? No, adults are putting. Everything has become commerce. So, children are playing video games, whatever some… in India, some pug B, what is it? Huh? Because I came to know about it because the Prime Minister mentioned this <laughs> something. See, it seems whatever, two, three hours a day, you're practicing how to kill this one, this one, this one and this one. Okay? Chuk, 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 I'm shooting. When I am twelve, thirteen, it may be okay. When I become eighteen, don't want… don't I want to get a little real? Huh? Am I happy just shooting them on my phone? I would like to really shoot them. Please understand this. You think I will be satisfied just shooting people when I think it's the right thing to do? Whoever appears, I shoot them, shoot them, shoot them on the phone. You think my instinct of wanting to shoot people that I see, will be satisfied just on the phone, you are living somewhere. It's not reality. So when we are putting our children through this and we think they are violent, they are wrong, no, this is the kind of content you are giving them. Can't we change the content to whatever extent we can? I mean, but there are a lot of studies that have been done that the, the internet is causing a lot of angst <laughs> for young people. See, these studies goes on about everything. What is not causing angst, tell me. Everything is. And these studies keep changing ev all the time. Yes, there is some kind of uh, impact of a screen time because of the type of light it emits, people lose their ability. Because they're going on this late night, they cannot sleep properly. Because they cannot sleep properly, next day morning there are many troubles. All these things are rolling up. Today in United States, they have technology de-addiction centers where <laughs> like… <laughs> Like A or something, they have technology de-addiction centers where people go there and it's a big thing that you can live without a phone. <laughs> it's a huge achievement that you kept your phone away for whatever number of days. So, technology is not the problem. Compulsiveness is the problem, isn't it? If you're compulsive, 
Even the food that you eat, if you eat compulsively, won't you get sick? So for compulsiveness, there's only one cure, consciousness. There is simply no other cure. You can make adjustments. Can I say a joke? Is it okay? Please, of course. <laughs> Uh, on a certain day, an office colleague, a young woman, asked Shankaran Pillai that, hey, <laughs> that uh, if she could get a lift in his car. So, she took her in the car and he was driving. When it got a little lonely part of the road, he pulled the car aside and he suddenly became like an octopus. That is, his limbs were all over her. She pushed him away and said, you fool, what are you trying to do? I thought you were a decent fellow and I came with you. He said, I'm sorry, I quit smoking <laughs> <laughs> then, 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 then tell us, how do we get to a point of consciousness then? How do we not take our impulse from smoking to something else? See, uh, we, we are misunderstanding consciousness as just mental alertness. Mental alertness will help you to survive better. Consciousness is not about that. See, you know, you know that you exist right now only because you're conscious, isn't it? You are conscious right now. That's why you know that you're here. Suppose you fell asleep. You don't know that you exist, isn't it? You don't know the world exists, nor do you know that you exist simply because <coughs> you're somewhat unconscious. Does it mean to say you're completely unconscious? No, you're still conscious when you're sleeping, but not conscious enough to notice the presence of many things. So consciousness is not whether it is present or absent, it is always there. The question is only the intensity and the volume of it. If we have to use the analogy right now, see, the lights are focused on us, so both of us are clearly seen. There are people hiding in darkness. <laughs> Suppose you dim the light further, all these people will disappear. Only two of us will be there. If you increase the voltage, suddenly they will all appear. They were always here. They were here all the time. Because the lights were dimmed, I could only see you and nobody else. If the lights were up, then you could see. This is all consciousness is. Everybody is conscious. Question is how conscious? So to increase or to raise consciousness, what have we done in the societies? Our entire education system is just about survival, one being better than the other. How can you be conscious when you're competitive? When you're all you want to do is be better than somebody, your only joy is other people's failures. <laughs> How will you be conscious? When you're enjoying other people's sufferings, other people's failures, this is what being number one means. I am the number one means what? You are number ten, that's my joy. So I think this is sickness. From kindergarten you are spreading this sickness into children and you expect them to be fantastic, it won't work like that. So do we need to change our systems? Oh, oh definitely <laughs> See, right now it is anyway going to change in the next five to ten years, not because people are going to become conscious, simply because of artificial intelligence. For a long time, I always wondered even when I went to the school, some… an idiotic person who's read a book a few years ahead of me suddenly is acting like they're something superior. Just you read a book few years ahead of me and how come you're so superior? I don't understand this. If you're a scholar, you read a few books. If you're a religious person, you read just one book and somehow you're <laughs> superior. <laughs> how come just by reading one book ahead of me, you become a superior life? All this is going to be demolished in the next five, ten years time. My phone will be able to do ten PhDs a day. It has enough memory to do that. So all scholars, religious people, people who just keep on uh, vomiting their stuff that they've read elsewhere, this will be nothing. This will be nothing. So if… see, there was a time, I remember this very well, in Mumbai port, when the first gantry was installed to load and unload the ships, uh, you know, about thirty-five, forty years ago maybe, 
All the labor protested, they went on strikes. Then uh, I was in a… you know, I'm <laughs> interested in this thing, so I was visiting, visiting some ports recently. I was inquiring what was the size of the vessels then, what is the size of the vessel now, how much time does it take to load, unload. At that time, the biggest vessels were about thirty thousand tons or thirty-five thousand tons in that range. Today, most of the vessels are… vessels are over hundred thousand tons, some of them are quarter million tons. But at that time, they were taking twenty-six to twenty-eight days to unload one ship. Today, they unload a ship in less than twenty-four hours and they're unloading twelve, fifteen ships at the same time. That is, in one day, twelve, fifteen ships are unloaded. Why? Because of… From man's muscle, we move to machine. Right now, all the professors, scholars, all of them are crying what will happen to our jobs. It's the same situation. What you could do with your intellect, a machine is coming which can do better. My first brush with artificial intelligence as I saw it was when I was thirteen years of age. Today's children, everybody is on the iPads and screens all the time. <laughs> When I was thirteen, for the first time I saw a fla flatbed calculator. So somebody brought it to school, I had never seen anything like that. They said multiplication, tuk 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 tuk, tuk 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 tuk, <laughs> just came. Immediately I felt offended <laughs> because if it can be done like this, why the hell are they torturing me in the arithmetic class <laughs> So and I imagine if there was a calculator for physics, chemistry, biology, everything, how wonderful. It took fifty years, <laughs> now it's coming. <laughs> All the best for the children of the future because <laughs> they don't have to go through this torture <laughs> of simply trying to retain something in your memory and believe that your memory is intelligence. Your memory is not intelligence. Your memory is a certain capability, all right? But intelligence is a different dimension of life. Mm. Consciousness means pure intelligence, unsullied by memory. Now if I look at you, oh I know Elda, oh she is good, she is bad, she is my friend, she is my enemy, this, that, that, so much nonsense in my head. What happens now is, I don't see you the way you are right now. Yes? Mm. If my intelligence is sullied by my memory, I cannot see you and experience you the way you are right now. If I don't see you right now the way you are, I cannot see this flower the way it is right now, I cannot see the sunrise, I cannot see the sunset, for everything I have a stupid meaning in my head. There is no meaning in the phenom phenomena of life. There is no meaning to sunrise, there is no meaning to a flower, there is no meaning to a cloud, there is no meaning to anything. It's just that it's fantastic, that's all. Meaning exists only in the psychological framework of the human being and these meanings are simply because we are constantly dipping into our memory. In traditional terms in India, when we see people living out of their memory, we say, Ayo karma <laughs> That means past memory is ruling them. They will never experience life. They will just recycle the same stuff. Is it possible to shed or leave behind memory? I'm sorry? Is it possible to shed or leave behind your memory? See, you don't because have to shed your Because it's part of your memory. identity. No, no. If you shed your memory, uh, you will again walk into the same pits that you walked in in the past. <laughs> memory is not to be shed, it needs to be carried little loose, that it is not sticking to you all the time. See, your entire body right now is just memory. There is evolutionary memory, there is genetic memory, there is karmic memory, there is conscious and unconscious levels of memory, articulate and inarticulate levels of memory. In yoga we identify your existence as eight dimensions of memory. This whole thing is memory, isn't it? Mm. See, you may not remember how ten generations ago your great-grandmother looked like, but her nose is sitting on your face. <laughs> Find your own pleasure. If you are extremely joyful within yourself, you found the amrita within yourself. You are extremely… you are an extreme state of pleasantness. Now, being with people, not anymore about squeezing pleasure out of them. Being with people is just out of… just being with them. Only now you're truly capable of love, otherwise it is just a open sesame trick. I love you means 
Whether they believe you or not, for that moment they make themselves believe you because they are also in need of something, you are also in need of something, isn't it? It's a… it's like the… you know, Alibaba under forty? <laughs> open sesame means it opens. This is just like the I love you means many things open up. <laughs> now, by doing this, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, that's the way people conduct their life, there's nothing to it. But by doing this, the true possibility of knowing an intense sense of love within you is lost. You're here constantly looking, what can I get out of this person, what can I get out of that person? This is a con job. It's called a love affair <laughs> but it's a con job. But if you are extremely ecstatic by yourself when you're being with people, it's about sharing your ecstasy. It is about if they are not touched by it, somehow to touch them with it rather than seeing what you can squeeze out of them. The whole fundamentals of your life will change. Yes and no in the sense, it is not the sexuality which limits it, but it's the excessive identity with the physicality which limits it. So, it is not sexuality per se which becomes the barrier, but the attachment it creates to the physicality which definitely becomes the barrier. This question is coming from a certain amount of bits and pieces, the gossip that you have heard about how you could assimilate your own semen and raise it up to your higher possibility. Yes, it is true. At the same time, it is not because of abstinence that one does it, it is because of internalizing your energies that you do it. It is not simply that somebody is abstaining from sex and suddenly his energies are all organized and it's going up, it's not true. If your energies get organized and begin to move up, the need for sexuality may evaporate for you but it doesn't leave you incapable. It doesn't leave you impotent, but the need is gone. It is just no more a compulsive thing. And it is not just this one thing, all compulsiveness is lost. Essentially, most of the sexuality that's happening on the planet is happening because of a certain compulsiveness, isn't it? It's a compulsive drive. When you become conscious, when all compulsiveness disappears, this also disappears. It is just that because people are so body-oriented, they are always thinking spirituality versus sexuality. They are not connected. They are not connected. One is of the body, another is of a different dimension. It is simply because people are so because religions of the world, moral schools and the ethical schools have been always speaking against it, it has become such a big issue in people's minds. They think the only way to know something beyond is, you must be away from this. Because somewhere you are not able to accept the simple biology of a human being, which is the tragedy that you cannot accept the simple biology. You either have to celebrate it or you have to push it down the drain. Both are not needed. You can look at it for the limitation that it is and for the possibility that it is. So, if because of the impurity of sex, your spirituality is going to get disturbed, I want you to know that your very birth is impure. When you come from such an impure birth, where is the possibility for you? There is no possibility for you. Only if you fell from somewhere else, if the stoke dropped you, <laughs> there is some possibility of you becoming spiritual. If, you are, if your mother had a normal birth, you have no possibility. A six-year-old girl 
came home one day from school and asked mama how was i born the mother was embarrassed she said a stoke dropped you she said okay she noted down <laughs> mama how were you born a stoke dropped me too mama how was grandmama born a stoke dropped her too then the girl became serious and she went down and th sat down and started writing what means focus to you and, and which way can we apply focus in our daily life so what's your definition of focus okay uh there are many ways to describe this word instead of saying focus if you use the word attention would you agree that attention and focus are about the same thing there is a little difference there is there are nuances to it but when you say focus it's just like focusing a light on something means only a focus is always a spot attention can be much more widespread see right now if you have clear vision i am having problem seeing the young man because you kept him in darkness there in the hall <laughs> but if the hall was well lit i don't have to focus myself to see the people who are sitting here i just need attention if i am attentive i will see all the people here the way they are but now i get interested in this one young man then i need focus if i had only focus without the general attention about everything around me indiscriminate attention i'm talking about attention not even about something just being attentive because only because there is a certain level of attention and awareness within you you even know that you exist otherwise let's say in sleep in your experience neither the world exists nor you exist all that's happened is there is no attention because there is no attention there is no perception of any kind 